Hi and welcome to this lesson on polynomials. Okay, so what on earth is polynomials? Am I swearing at you? No, I'm not. Okay, polynomials simply means many parts. Okay, poly means many. Come on. Many. And nomials means parts. Many parts. Now in a mathematical expression, let's look at something like 2x plus... 3y minus 7. In a mathematical expression, the parts that I'm talking about um, are separated by pluses and minuses. So there's a plus and there's a minus. So this plus and minus divides my uh, question into three parts, or my expression into three parts. We have 2x, we have 3y, and we have negative 7. Those are the three parts, and parts in mathematics we call terms. Okay, that's called terms. So a polynomial is a mathematical expression with many terms, but there's a little bit more conditions that applies to this as well. Okay, a polynomial is also, uh, we okay, we're only going to look at polynomials with one variable. Okay, so polynomial is a function of one variable, okay, and some constant numbers. So let's say there's a constant number a0, it's just some number like 4 or 3. There's no x in this function, and um, sorry I write it so far apart, you'll see why in just a minute, okay. Uh, this constant function is called constant because it doesn't contain any x's. So if x changes, p of x will not change. It will stay an a. So this is just called a constant function. Okay, a constant function. Okay, but we could have had also an x. In other words, another term uh, with the constant term, we also have an x term. So its exponent is a power 1. And it also has a coefficient uh, telling me how many of those x's I have. And uh, can be any number. Again, it can be 2x to the power of 1 plus 4. That would be another example of a polynomial. And a polynomial like that if he had two terms where we had an x to the power of 1, that would be called a linear function. A linear function. Okay, and you recall, this is mx plus c, or ax plus b. This is the straight line function. A straight line is a type of polynomial. Okay, um, and then I think you can see where I'm going. We could have had an a x squared. In other words, another term where we have x to the power of 2 and he will also have a coefficient. I'm just calling it a2 but it can be something like a 3 or a 5, uh, whatever. Okay, And when we have three terms where the highest exponent is a, is a square a to the power of 2, it is called a quadratic function. Okay, And you will recall this quadratic function and a quadratic function is also a type of polynomial. Okay, It has a mathematical expression with many parts. And then we could have had an x to the power of 3. Okay. And in this case, it would be called a third degree polynomial. Okay, A third degree polynomial. Polynomial. Okay, so what is the degree of a polynomial? Well, let's see if you can figure out it out. This would be a second, a second degree polynomial. That one would be a first degree polynomial. And a constant function will be a polynomial with a degree of 0. Can you figure it out? 
Okay, I'm sure you could see that the degree of a polynomial, the degree of polynomial Px, okay, is the value of the highest exponent. Okay, the value of the highest exponent. Okay, so do you think we could go on? Okay, in other words, could we have a x to the power of 4, or x to the power of 10, x to the power of, and go on and on and on? Of course, okay. As a matter of fact, there is no limit to the degree that a polynomial can have. Uh, in other words, we can have anything, any degree. So for that, I'm just going to say, okay, we could have had an x, and I've got a little space here, so I'm cramming it in. I'm sorry about that. We can go up to x to the power of n. n can be any exponent. So the degree of this thing would be the degree, I would write it like that, the degree of p, this polynomial will be n. Whatever is the highest exponent of this expression, and it will, um, it might have n parts. That's the maximum number of parts it can have, but it doesn't have to have an x to the power of two. Let me show you uh, a, a basic example. I can, for example, have a polynomial p x is equal to three x squared minus one. Okay, this is. A polynomial of degree 2 because its highest exponent for x is 2 okay um, and it only has two terms but the terms has got nothing to do with the degree because I can have something like this I can have px is equal to y cubed this is a polynomial of degree 3 okay the only thing is, is that the coefficient of the other terms are all zero. It's got no y squared terms, it's got no y terms, and it has no constant terms. And we just don't need to write that. That's why we write y to the power of 3. Okay, finally, all the only other thing I'm going to mention is the leading coefficient. Okay, the leading coefficient. So, the, what's going on? There we go. The leading coefficient, and I hope I'm spelling this right. Okay, the leading coefficient is the coefficient. Okay, coefficient tells me how many of that I have. The coefficient of the first term. Okay, so if we look our, at our very first example, we had this, this was our first term, and so the leading coefficient would have been the 2. Now, usually in polynomials, we write it in a decreasing order of the exponents. So we'll have x to the power of 10, then plus our x to the power of 9, plus or however many um, uh, terms we have, the one with the highest exponent would be written first and in other words the its coefficient the number that appears in front of that base and exponent will be usually be the leading coefficient so usually it is the um, this term the coefficient that's in front of the highest exponent okay hope that makes sense it's not too difficult and I'll see you in the next video where we are looking at some basic polynomials and their properties. See you there.